Good evening and thank you for being with us tonight. We want to get right to breaking news. Protests are quickly escalating at the Denver Police Headquarters downtown. Demonstrators are throwing firecrackers. It appears as if police have also used some type of projectiles of their own. That's right. Denver 7's Addie Guajardo is monitoring the situation right now. Addie, we are hearing a lot of bangs, a lot of people coughing. What are you seeing right now? Well, Jacqueline and Jason, right now those protesters are on the move and DPD and SWAT team just packed up and moved out of this area. But I want you to take a look at all the damage kind of left behind. You see there's right over here where this car is driving by behind me. There's a fire that was started right here. You see the Denver Police Department headquarters. We've got that gated off. See all the officers behind there. They're all dressed in riot here. Now, just a few moments ago before going live, there was a clash between the officers and those protesters. The protesters were shaking that gate. And then at one point, the DPD officers started shooting some kind of projectile object at the protesters. And that's when those firecrackers started getting thrown towards the police department. At one point, there was a couple different fires going off behind that gate. Now, I want you to take a look all down the street. Reported rape at in some the city of Denver. And the things that are double. happening. We're going to kind of move away. Double from him. Protesters headed that way. Now, what I want you to know is that we arrived around 8.30 today when this started developing. It didn't start getting a little violent until about 9 o'clock. I have seen people with bats, a person with an axe that smashed a window. Take a look. Lance is right over there where that window was smashed earlier today. You see some of the, the vandalism on those windows where they spray painted as well. Now, at one point earlier today, there was a van and there was protesters pulling shields to protect themselves out of that van. Now, we've seen protesters with gas masks on, with helmets on, with just all types of gear. Now, I tried talking to a few of them. A lot of them did not want to talk to us, but what they did make clear, the ones that did, was that they want to defund the police department. They want to abolish the police department. Some of them told me they just want justice for Elijah McClain and some of the other people that they feel have not gotten justice. Um, so there's just a lot happening right here, and this is all developing. As I said, SWAT team is out here. Denver Police Department is in full riot gear, and uh, we're seeing a lot happening. So we're going to continue to bring you the latest coverage. I'm going to send it back to you, Jacqueline and Jason. All right, Addy, we know that you're uh, being very careful out there right now, and we also have Denver 7's Lance Hernandez. He's at those protests as we speak. Lance, tell us where you are and what you're seeing right now. Well, I'm over here at 14th and Delaware. Protesters have been confronting police here for a good half hour already. Now, when we arrived on the scene, we saw a number of them pushing up against that fence that police set up on the southwest corner of their headquarters property a little bit earlier today. A, a lot of graffiti written on the wall behind me, but uh, they started to push police, ordering them to get back. Uh, eventually, we saw uh, some uh, protesters toss fireworks, including what sounded like cherry bombs, into that courtyard area there. A number of very loud explosions. Police then responding with pepper balls and what appeared to be either pepper spray or tear glass. No, tear gas, rather. Right next to me, we're hearing shards of glass break uh, and drop down periodically. Uh, obviously, this window damaged in an apartment building here at 13th and Delaware. I'm not sure the name of that uh, apartment complex. We've seen uh, a number of residents walk by and take some pictures. A little bit earlier out here, uh, as Addie mentioned, there were some fires set in the street. It looks like right in the center of the street, there was a flag that was set down on the, on the ground and torched. It has burned completely. That utility box over there on the corner over there, uh, some flames uh, set on fire or some, some flames we saw on the far side of that utility box a little bit earlier and it looked like some kind of flammable liquid. Somebody kicked something and then some flames spread out onto the street. Now we're not aware of any uh, injuries so far, but we know there have been a number of explosions. SWAT on scene, we saw a number of vehicles with SWAT officers on them uh, head off in a couple of different directions trying to push those protesters away from uh, police headquarters. But there is damage here. There is damage here in the vicinity. Uh, 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 some inappropriate graffiti spray painted on the wall of police headquarters, but police doing what they can to move those protesters away from their headquarters building. Reporting live at 
13th in Delaware, I'm Lance Hernandez. Back to you. Thanks so much, Lance. And right now, Lance, we can see those protesters. They're marching down 6th Street. We're looking at them from Air Tracker 7 right now. I want to ask you, Lance, you've been covering this all along. You've been seeing how these protests go. How does this one compare to those? It looks, it looks different. How, what are you seeing that's different on this one? Well, I can just tell you that, you know, when we got here, it didn't look like the crowd was that big, but it may have been some members of the same crowd that were here in the past as well. These are people that have their faces covered. There are people that uh, have umbrellas. There are people that were getting ready to throw, throw whatever pepper balls or gas back at the police. So these are experienced people that have dealt with uh, protests and this kind of behavior before. It just didn't seem as big as it was in the past. It wasn't very big, that they, but they had quite an impact there. And as you said, these guys, some of them were wearing uh, helmets. We heard that some of them were also uh, carrying sort of uh, wearing obvious equipment that they were prepared to be part of a, a protest. They, they, came, they came equipped for this, a number of them wearing gas masks, uh, a number of them wearing hard helmets. We saw a number of umbrellas. Uh, I didn't ask them, but apparently the umbrellas may have been to, to try to deflect any pepper balls that were coming their way. Uh, but they're, they're, they're experienced at that, and they're here trying to make a point uh, that they want the police department disbanded. They want it defunded. Back to you. As you're talking, they set some fires outside of the police station. We also heard about vandalism. And just to recap, we saw that the officers were also... Uh, opening uh, opening fire with pepper balls or pepper spray. And that video that you were seeing from earlier happened right around uh, 9 o'clock this evening where those protesters came right up into that gate. Uh, they started shaking it, trying to break into that courtyard again. All of this unfolding near 14th and Cherokee in downtown Denver. You're seeing a live look from Air Tracker 7 there on the side of your screen right now. Uh, this protest was set to start at around 8 p.m., but we saw it quickly devolve downhill right around 9. That was the first time that we saw what appeared to be pepper spray or some kind of projectiles from police then the fireworks from the protesters uh, and that's when we got a look at the uh, umbrellas that Lance was referring to protesters kind of forming a bit of a wall behind large black umbrellas obviously as he had mentioned uh, the crowd is smaller but a little bit more well equipped Jacqueline well experienced I think it ex escalated so quickly and uh, like you said when they formed that umbrella barricade that's one of the first times we've seen something like that happen obviously it was organized in advance. They were ready to go. Uh, they came again equipped with gas masks and helmets and that's something that we're seeing more and more of when it comes to some of these protests. We did see uh, as we were preparing to get uh, to come on air here live tonight um, from some of our live shots from our crews on the ground. We did see someone with a hammer smashing out that window that Lance Hernandez was standing next to earlier. We did see one protester with what appears to be a small axe or a hatchet that they were carrying along with a flag. So uh, some of these uh, individuals did come armed uh, at one point. We you know, we've been talking about these umbrellas at one point. There was two or three people there that actually had what appeared to be riot shields that you would usually see the police department with showing up there. Now, as we see from Air Tracker 7, the, the protesters continuing to move and police trying to move. We haven't seen uh, those small fires or fireworks, at least in the last few minutes, since they uh, have been trying to move this crowd away from Denver Police Headquarters downtown. Right, and this is interesting because these uh, protesters originally were going to Denver Police Headquarters, protesting in part that video that we saw earlier this week with Denver police officers responding to other protesters, and they responded to those protesters with billy clubs, and there was a call for an investigation into that. That's what this protest was supposed to be about, although we were hearing from Addy and from our crews on the scene, Lance, uh, that they were calling to defund the police, which is something that we're hearing more and more of now. And these were protesters who were wearing all black, who had their faces covered, who came equipped with umbrellas. They were setting fires outside police headquarters, and it was obvious that Denver police were prepared and ready to respond to this. Let's go back out to Lance Hernandez. Lance, what are you seeing right now? Um, I'm not I'm not doing anything. What did you notice about the crowd tonight? Well, I live in this building and I've observed a lot of the demonstrations that have happened over the last few weeks. 
tonight was particularly aggressive. What's interesting is looking at the crowd. There's some people out here about Black Lives Matter, which is really important. There's other people that want to abolish the police. And then there's other people that are just busting stuff and raising hell just because they can get away with it. This is All right, Lance, we don't, we're don't. we sorry to interrupt you, but and, we need to get right to Denver 7's uh, Addy Guajardo, who is out got, at police headquarters as well. We're going to pause second. you for just a moment and send it over to Addy Guajardo. Addy, oh. things are escalating there. Tell us what's Come going on. Hang on just a second. Stay with it. Jacqueline, it's things are escalating. Everywhere she is. Who has started a fire outside the courthouse. We've also heard them smashing some windows. And right now, if you, you could see those trees really catching fire. And this is a threat because we know that it's been hot and dry. We already have so much going on with the heat out here in Colorado. Uh, but I want you to take a look further down. There's even some kind of water mechanism that's sprinkling everywhere. There's more police down there, but I want you to take a look this way. So Leah, if you could kind of turn behind us so we could show some of the protesters. They're in the middle of the street right now. They're just observing the fire that's going off. So you can see them. There's not much happening right now. And they're chanting. And they're waiting for the police department earlier and move to the left, Leah, just a little bit. They were right up against the gate. You're seeing them right now. Take a look. There's a confrontation. Denver police are spraying some of those protesters right now. It appears to be pepper spray. We're going to stay a little bit behind because we've seen them disperse some kind of pepper balls. Take a look. With the bat right here, we're seeing one of the protesters smash one of these lights, and now they're backing up from the scene, Leah, we're going to get her out of the street. There's still traffic open on the street. So stay with us as we try to figure out what is going on here on 14th Nalati. A lot of people are obviously angry. You could see all the shields that they have to protect themselves. They are wearing gas masks. They're using umbrellas as well. The police presence has gotten closer. <clears throat> Right now, as that fire continues to burn, it has not been put out. And I'm seeing one of the protesters right now equipped with not only an umbrella, but pepper spray. And SWAT is arriving on scene, and we're seeing some of these protesters begin to back up as they try to get this under control. So we're seeing heavy police presence, not one, but two vehicles out here as that fire is still burning behind us. Still no one extinguishing it, but I'm assuming they're about to do that right now. Leah, do you want to take a look at this fire right now? We're hoping they're going to be able to put that out before more damage is done. It looks like the fire department is just arriving on the scene right now. Protesters are beginning to go and take a look. You see one of the protesters right behind me smashing out that window. It looks like it is shattered. I don't see an actual hole through the window at this point. But as I said earlier, I saw one person equipped with an ax smashing some of those parking meters. I also saw somebody with a bat smashing some other objects. We saw one earlier smashing this walking sign. So a lot happening right now. We've got that fire finally put out. Leah, you wanna take a look as they're putting out that fire. Firefighters are on scene getting that fire out. Looks like those protesters are on the move once again. So we're going to try to catch up with them here shortly. So that's smoke. So I'm going to send it back to you, Jacqueline and Jason. I'm going to catch up with the protesters to bring you guys the latest details out here. All right. Incredible video, Addy. Thank you so much. And we're glad that you're keeping your distance a little bit and staying safe. And you can see right now live from Air Tracker 7 that fire that has been started by the protesters as fire trucks are responding to the scene right now. Yeah, and we saw the additional uh, presence of Denver police officers and SWAT teams arrive uh, after that fire was lit again uh, at around 930. That was after uh, a little bit of a, a lull there as police uh, were able to move the protesters away from 14th and Cherokee, which is the one of the corners of Denver police headquarters downtown. They shifted them down the scene down uh, to a different portion of downtown. And then just in the middle of uh, uh, as Lance was chatting with somebody else, uh, we saw that fire just 
pop up there in the middle of Addy's shot. Now you can see Denver Fire Department. Uh, they are there. They have put that fire out, luckily. Uh, but again, this kind of goes back to the theme that we've been talking about, that this began as an anti-police protest. It began at 8 o'clock. It was not an extension of a previously peaceful protest. This simply started at 8. At 9 o'clock, there was a confrontation with police. Now by 9.30, we've already seen a fairly, uh, I mean, it's a medium-sized fire. It wasn't something that was started by a simple firework, uh, as we saw earlier in the middle of the street. Uh, now is now, luckily, Denver Fire was able to, to get on scene and put that out as, once again, the protesters are now moving on to a different portion of downtown. Yeah, we are literally watching live as firefighters and police officers are going around this part of downtown putting out fires. The protesters have set several fires. That was one of the bigger ones that we saw live. We were watching Denver 7's Lance Hernandez interviewing a resident who said it seems like he's seen plenty of protests downtown, but this one was more aggressive. It escalated more quickly, and it seemed like the protesters came sort of looking for a fight, and that's what they're getting right now as we speak. And as Addy mentioned, uh, while this fire was burning, there were also some protesters that were about a half a block away. Then police descended upon them. Then there was another confrontation, another form of clash. Uh, we couldn't necessarily see uh, specifically if we were talking about projectiles or pepper spray or pepper balls, as we had seen uh, as prior protests that we've seen earlier on in the summer uh, devolved into uh, from nonviolent into kind of these clashes with police. But again, there was another clash there not far from where that fire was burning. And we are watching live right now on Air Tracker 7 as we're watching this group of protesters move. And you can tell this isn't a large group of protesters. This is relatively small. It looks like a few dozen people who are uh, causing a significant impact right now in downtown Denver as they sort of walk through town, setting fires, throwing fireworks. Uh, we were hearing that they were uh, throwing projectiles at police. They're wearing helmets and gas masks, and, and they're causing quite a disturbance right now as they began as an anti-police protest. Um, and now what you see is going on. All right, we're going to talk about the officers that we've seen. You saw some SWAT officers pulling up with a Addy. You can see right now, so this is video of police officers standing ready to go, uh, obviously equipped and ready for this protest to respond to what's happening downtown. And given the, the continued shots that we've seen from Air Tracker 7, uh, the fact that protesters are moving, that this is now the second location that they've clashed with police here in the downtown area. Uh, we haven't gotten official word from Denver police, but we can tell you right now, uh, if you are planning on driving downtown, don't at least uh, for, for the foreseeable future, just because we don't know where these protesters are going next. We don't know uh, what the impact on traffic could potentially be um, for either bystanders or, or traffic. So at this point, um, if you are, uh, you know, on a Saturday night thinking about driving through downtown to try to take an alternate route at this point, because uh, it's clearly uh, kind of devolved into something that we don't really know what's coming next. And that's why we continue to to kind of keep our eyes uh, and our ears on the ground there. We have our two crews, uh, Lance Hernandez and Andy Guajardo that are down there. Uh, we are keeping an eye on it from the sky. Uh, but at this point, if you can just avoid downtown, given uh, the fact that now once again, we are seeing uh, protesters potentially with motives that are not necessarily peaceful coming uh, into contact uh, with Denver police here downtown tonight. Yeah, we've seen we, okay, we are hearing that Denver 7's Addy Guajardo is ready to talk to us and give us an update of what's going on down, down there. Addy, what can you tell us? What are you seeing right now? I, we can hear the sirens. Well, Jacqueline, police presence is definitely increasing as protesters move further down. And let me tell you, we just kind of jogged over this way because all we could hear for more than a block away is the sound of windows smashing. And let me show you some of the damage. Leah, head over this way for a second. Over here at this quiz nose, you can see all these windows, let me have Leah kind of catch up with some of the damage over here. We're trying to catch our breath, but all the windows here at Quiznos completely smashed out. As I said earlier, we saw people with bats, one person with an ax smashing windows, smashing meters, smashing walking signs. So we're just kind of walking, showing you some of the damage being done to some of these businesses as these protesters are moving along now. now we start seeing some of these damages as early as about 8.50, right before 9 o'clock. So you can see that right now police are setting up barricades, barricades that protesters have been moving as they're moving down 
while they are chanting, no justice, no peace. Now I spoke to a couple protesters, many of them really didn't want to talk to us, but the ones that did say that they want to defund the police department or and say they want justice for Elijah McClain as well. There were some, some people who were, oh wait, let's get closer. You know what? I want to show you what's going on. There's a fire that's starting a little bit further down. So I'm going to have you guys kind of bear with me as we get closer. We're on the side that police are on, so I feel a little bit safer being on this side. You can see one of the signs, one of those barricades is on fire right now. Police jumping off their motorcycles as protesters are on the move. Those barricades coming down, check out, so they can get the SWAT team to the designated area. Right now, officers just tossing those. Now, this, I can tell you from early on, did not look like it was going to be a peaceful protest. People with gas masks, people with shields ready to protect themselves, having pepper spray in hand, fireworks earlier today, around nine o'clock when we began our coverage, we saw those protesters tossing firecrackers at those officers behind the gated area at Denver Police Department headquarters. Now those officers returning some kind of projectile object. And look at that right now, there's uh, all the officers. We're gonna move a little bit this way, Leah. If you wanna come with me. Leah is our photojournalist. She's been doing a great job tonight, keeping up with everything that is happening. <coughs> now, the reason I'm coughing is because there's some kind of pepper in the air. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what police or the protesters have been dispersing, but we believe it's either pepper balls or gas in the air. Protesters once again on the move as police stand their ground here on Bannock and 14th Street right now. So this is a live look at what's happening at this moment. Now I'm gonna send it back to you, Jason and Jacqueline, uh, so you can uh, take a better look of the chopper in the air. Wow, all right, I mean, that was incredible video that you showed us, Addy. First, uh, just of the amount of damage that we're seeing. Anyone who's been down in that area has been to that Quiznos over there by the city county building and, and near the police station, um, and to see all of those windows all throughout the area shattered, to see the, the road, uh, the hazard signs on fire, you can see the kind of damage that's going on right now, far from a peaceful protest in downtown Denver. Yeah, and, and once again, that was from 14th and Bannock where we saw that, that road blockade that was caught on fire, that police were moving out of the way to move protesters. We want to go back to Denver 7's Lance Hernandez right now with an update from where you are, Lance. Well, you can see the cops on motorcycles getting ready to move out here. The, it looks like police are simply trying to push that protest crowd through the neighborhood to keep them moving. Uh, we saw them t uh, move all the barricades that the protesters set up in the road. You can see the SWAT team here moving through one SWAT unit heading south on Bannock Street itself, another one here getting ready to go east on 14th Avenue, as well as the, the cops on the motorbikes here. But it looks like the protesters themselves have moved on the south side of Civic Center Park over toward the Denver Public Library. So we're just gonna go ahead and kind of start walking this way here. Uh, you heard Addie talk about all the windows that were busted on some of those businesses uh, along uh, 14th Avenue, and including that Quiznos, we saw uh, protesters armed with sledgehammers uh, laying waste to those windows there. Uh, saw one over at uh, that apartment complex at 13th in Delaware, talked with one of the tenants there who said he lives up uh, on one of the upper floors, has a balcony, so he's watched these protests uh, as they've developed over the, the last few weeks. And he said this one here seemed a little bit different because there was less of a Black Lives Matter type um, bent with this crowd here and, and more of a bent of, dis of, of destruction. He said he saw axes, we've seen sledgehammers, we've seen them pounding on glass on a number of windows, a number of buildings here. Uh, so obviously they're, they're intent on causing destruction. And one, one protester kind of chuckled when we were looking and taking pictures of a broken window saying, oh, you, you're really concerned about broken glass. Um, so their attitude is that they're trying to fight systemic racism and, you know, whatever, whatever it takes to do that, that they're willing to do. And 
they just think that we should be focusing on uh, the bigger issue here. A lot of people consider that damage and destruction a big issue here, and that's why police are out in force. The folks uh, that, that we're following right now, uh, regular Denver police officers, the SWAT team, uh, moving east on 14th Avenue here. We're just north of the Denver Public Library. Uh, we know that was the scene of some destruction during one of the earlier protests several weeks ago. But uh, I can see the, the, the protesters themselves have massed over here right at the corner of 14th and Broadway. And uh, we're going to try to catch up with them and, and see which direction they, they move from here. We do know that the police helicopter is up in the sky, lights shining down on the protest area, uh, keeping an eye on them, trying to figure out which way they're moving so that police can try to station themselves and get the officers that uh, need to, to be there to con control uh, things uh, where they're needed. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it back to you guys here while we try to catch up with the crowd here and, and see what's happening next. But uh, I can tell you that's the scene that I've observed over here along 14th Avenue, uh, close to Broadway. Back to you. All right, thank you so much, Lance. Uh, we have two crews live on this scene right now as we follow these protesters. And we do want to say that the reason we're following this and keeping an eye on thing is, things is because we are watching for inappropriate activity from either side. Or what are police officers doing? How are they responding to protesters? There have been complaints about how Denver police responded to protesters earlier this week. They came under fire for that. Uh, that's part of the reason initially, or at least the purported reason for this protest. Um, although it appears that, as Lance said, this uh, was less of a Black Lives Matter protest, according to one of the witnesses, and more of sort of a uh, burn it down, burn down the system kind of protest. Yeah, and Denver police also came under fire for how they handled protesters earlier on in the summer in the wake of George Floyd's death. Uh, as some of these protests uh, kept getting more and more violent, they, in, they included property damage and things like that, and police once again came under fire for how they responded. They were even subject to a restraining order from a judge at one point, say in, in, in reference to the use of projectiles and pepper spray and pepper bullets and things like that, that has since run out. That judge's order ran out in the end of June for from the last uh, that, that I can tell here doing some quick research. And so obviously now much later on uh, in the summer and we're once again seeing police in riot gear uh, in Lance's shot. I believe you did see uh, what appeared to be kind of that paintball gun that that carries those pepper bullets that was at least being carried by several officers as they continue to do what they have done for other protests, which as Lance mentioned is to kind of just move these protesters along uh, so that they can't really get their footing, I guess, uh, in one particular area that they might try to or decide to eventually just disperse. But as we see and as we have seen uh, throughout the course of tonight and prior protests after dark, they kind of scatter the protesters do and then they regather all in one area only to then have another confrontation with police. Exactly, and that's what we're seeing live here. Again, this is a shot from Air Tracker 7. Uh, this began as a protest at 8 o'clock this evening. That was supposed to be a protest, in uh, an anti-police protest outside police headquarters. It quickly escalated into a, a clash with police. We saw pepper spray. We saw fires being set. There has been vandalism all over that area with shattered windows, spray-painted uh, buildings. Uh, people in the area say this has been a different kind of protest. It was a small group that has had a very large impact when you look at what's going on right now downtown. And so far we've counted uh, from our crews on the ground uh, approximately three small fires. Uh, the first happened uh, right around uh, the courtyard area of the uh, Denver Police Headquarters yeah. downtown, likely from a firework that crew that that protesters were either shooting or throwing into that area. The second uh, was a tree uh, with Denver 7's Eddie Guajardo and the third uh, a barricade. Uh, we, we have Lance Hernandez there on the ground. Uh, Lance, can you tell us where you are and what what what's the latest? I'm in front of the Denver Public Library on Broadway, just uh, south of 14th Avenue here. The protesters had gone down 14th Avenue toward Lincoln Street and then turned back over here and came back down Broadway. They're in the middle of Broadway now, stopping traffic. Uh, some of the traffic wanting to try to get through, but uh, the protesters uh, keeping the traffic uh, from going through while other pedestrians are out in the street. Uh, they're trying to... We can see that in the background over there, Denver police, the SWAT units now turning down on Broadway, coming up behind them. Some of the traffic trying to get through. Now the protesters waving the traffic to itself. 
we're going to kind of keep an eye on it here while we see the, the police SWAT units uh, on their vehicles coming up behind the, the protest crowd here on Broadway. Uh, everybody on Broadway moving south, walking along south. The SWAT unit's kind of slowing down, but again, as I mentioned, it appears like they're trying to just kind of keep protesters moving, just keep them on the move. And as, uh, as long as they're doing that, everybody just kind of keeps moving. Um, the protesters, this, this, this group of protesters, maybe they've splintered off a little bit because this one here looks a little bit smaller than the one we saw wa walking down 14th Avenue. There may be uh, another wing of those protesters uh, just to the north and east from here, but the one that we've been following here still moving south on Broadway, and now the SWAT unit just kind of standing pot pat on Broadway itself. Uh, you can see the motorcycle crew coming up behind them. Uh, as soon as everybody uh, aligns up here too, they'll probably start moving south from here. Lance, I'll it looks like these protesters are almost being herded by police as they're trying to uh, get them to, to keep moving, uh, perhaps to keep them from setting more fires, breaking more windows, causing more damage down in uh, downtown Denver right now. And in the prior uh, protests that we have seen and we have covered, uh, usually at least the, the uh, about two of them uh, that happened on sun Saturday or Sunday, this was the area they, where they really tried to push protesters and really tried to disperse them. We're going to go back to the ground uh, and Denver 7's Addie Guajardo. Addie, where are you? What are you seeing? Well, Jason, I'm over here on Cherokee and 13th, where I just found a group of maybe about a, just over a dozen people out here that tell me they're out here to make sure that the Denver Police Department and those officers are protected. And joining me right now is John Pappy. John, you know, tell us a little bit about what brought you guys out here tonight. So we know the protests that have actually happened before. We've seen the rioters come down here. We've seen the rioters across the country destroy cities. And we're not going to tolerate it. We're done with it. We are part of the silent majority. Most of us are veterans. I'm a Marine Corps veteran and a former law enforcement officer. We're not going to tolerate this stuff anymore. You know, people actually need to start standing up for themselves and standing up for their communities. And I mean, we can't have this. This is just nonsense. How many people are out here tonight? Uh, I think there's about 20 of us here. Um, I heard there's another group of 40 walking around and doing the exact same thing. People are standing up. They're tired of this nonsense. John, tell me how you guys plan to protect the Denver Police Department and their officers and, you know, make sure that these protesters don't cross the line. Well, a lot of it is just making sure that there's not things that can actually be thrown, um, like bags. Supposedly there's been bags of, you know, stuff planted all over the city to actually hurt people. So if we can start picking that stuff up, making sure that there isn't anything that can be thrown, anything that can be destructive, anything like that to help just cause a presence. Just let people know we're not going to tolerate it here. You know, if we have to make citizens arrest, we'll make citizens arrest. But we're not going to tolerate the violence. We're not going to tolerate destruction. Do you think you're overstepping your boundary and going a little too far? This is the Denver Police Department officer's job. Yes. Are we overstepping? No. This is our community that actually needs to step up. The entire community needs to step up and stop this. So a lot of these people that are out here are kids. Where's the parents actually making sure that their kids aren't doing this stuff? I know mine aren't. You know, we've seen people out here. Uh, we're going to give you a second. I know I know your phone's going yeah. off, and we're on live TV, so we apologize for that. He's going to just uh, mute that momentarily. Yeah, really quick. And uh, we have got just Sorry a couple more that. questions for him. You know, we've seen violence out here, people with an ax, a person with a bat. Right. Do you plan on using violence to stop violence? No, if it actually comes down to us getting into an altercation, the only time that something would actually happen, would, you know, if somebody's life is in danger. So it looks like we need to roll up, but. Are you guys carrying any pepper spray? Obviously you guys have uh, some gear with you. Uh, we have safety gear with us. All right, well, thank you so much, John. We appreciate Absolutely. your time. You stay safe out there. Thank you. Uh, we'll continue to bring you guys a coverage a uh, on this protest that's been happening out here in the clash between the Denver Police Department and those protesters. Jacqueline, Jason, I'm gonna send it right back to you guys. Addy, incredible interview. And, and you said he had gear on him. What kind of gear are you talking about? What did he have? Well, if you if you take a look right behind me, Jacqueline, some of them have 
vest on, making sure a lot of them have camouflage gear. So you can definitely tell who they are uh, that are out here to protect the Denver Police Department and those officers. They're also wearing, uh, I didn't see any actual equipment, but they have backpacks, so I don't know what's inside. John didn't give me too many details, but John has one of his canine dogs with him right now. You see that big group. He said about 20 people, and he's also mentioned that there's another group of about 40 people. We have not seen that other group, but you know what? Stay with us just one more second because we're seeing the protesters come down on 13th right now. So I want you to take a look. We're hearing something just busted. We're hearing some kind of shattering. That group of protesters seems to be growing from what we saw. When this first started, you know, there was a group of maybe about 30 people gathering outside the Denver Police Department headquarters around 830. Nothing really started to get violence until right before 9 p.m. But you can hear we're about three, two and a half blocks away, Jacqueline and Jason, from where those protesters are. We are hearing the sound of things cracking, things breaking, things being smashed at this moment. But you know what? I'm going to send it back to you guys. We're going to go catch up and see what's going on over there, but we're going to keep a safe distance as well. Incredible, Addy. It is a powder keg out there in downtown Denver right now. We are seeing protesters going face to face. We're seeing people who are going down there just because they want to try to protect police officers. The man that Addy interviewed said that were veterans, former law enforcement officers prepared to make a citizen's arrest, saying they're tired of seeing what they call rioters tearing up their cities and that they say the community needs to step up. And a powerful shot there from Addie is you could what appeared to be a line of protesters coming towards her with lights shown on them. That was kind of you, you couldn't really see that clearly because there appeared to be kind of a cloud there potentially again of some pepper spray or, or whatever kind of um, things that police were using. And then behind that, the SWAT vehicles that that appeared to be behind those protesters that continued uh, to move them down. Um, we uh, are monitoring social media as we are live here on the air. Uh, uh, no tweets, no Facebook posts from Denver police tonight in regards to this incident. Um, they are currently obviously responding to this, uh, as are we. We have crews on the ground, as you see that live shot from Air Tracker 7 right now, uh, as, as police continue to clash with protesters here tonight. Another night of protests and clashes in downtown Denver. We will continue our coverage after this short break.